That's strange. Well, since I got it like that, I might as well just continue um, the screen. Um, from my end, basically, it's too bright, but whatever. And also, not only is it bright, but I can barely, I can't, I can't even, I can barely see myself. But whatever. But nevertheless, oh, what's going on, YouTubers? It's the natural born thriller. And welcome everyone to. I know it's been long. Uh, you know, it's been a week overdue, but welcome everyone to WWE Stopping Grounds Review. The show from June 23rd, 2019. They were at uh, Tacoma, Washington, at the Tacoma Dome, with the attendance of 600. I mean, of 6,000, excuse me, WWE fans in attendance because they fail to sell out a <laughs> pay-per-view, a new pay-per-view to say least, in WWE Stomach Grounds. Under the promotion of WWE with the brands of Raw, SmackDown, and on the pre-show, 205. 205 Live, basically. Uh, your commentators were Michael Cole, Corey Graves and Renee Young for Raw. Your commentators, uh, Tom Phillips, Byron Saxon, and Corey Graves from SmackDown. Your commentators from the pre-show, Vic Joseph, Nigel McGinnis, and Eddie English for uh, 205 Live. You have your Spanish commentators, you have your German commentators, you have your ring announcers, ring announcers, excuse me, for SmackDown, and 205 Live, Grant Hamilton, and for Raw, Mike Rome. Your interviewers were uh, Troy Caruso and Caleb Braxton, and your pre-show panel were uh, John J. Coachman, uh Charlie Caruso, Booker T, and David Otunga. So let's get to the show itself. First of all, let's get to the pre-show match. I did watch the pre-show match. As far as the rest of the pre-show, I didn't care for the, any any angels in the pre-show. All I care about was the the, the pre-show match with chance to Drew Gulak versus the WWE Cruiserweight Champion Tony Nese versus Akira Tozawa in the Triple Threat match for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. And that's at 11 minutes and 20 seconds. And the match was good, obviously. No surprise, no surprise there, obviously. Uh, it should be on the main show, but at the same time, um, it was, you know, it, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty damn good to see on, uh, on the pre-show because the fans, uh, you know, cheer for this match on the pre-show, you know, very good match. Uh, I gotta say one thing about it, though, they was playing the advertisement during the match of Becky Lynch versus Lacey Evans. Well, you gotta watch it on the WWE Network, which tends to WWE Dumping Grounds, and free for uh, new subscribers. And I thought that for now it was gonna end it there, but nope, they decided to, to plug another match that's advertised, which is Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. And then again, you know, watch it only on the WWE Network, WWE Dumping Grounds, and for new subscribers, it's free. And then we get to the match. So in a way, um, I was a little, I was a little pissed off at, at that, but but hey, at least it didn't um, you know you know show any good parts of, of the match, uh, 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 any good par good parts of of the match between Tony Nese, Drew Gulak, and Akira Tozawa while they were showing the um, the advertising plugging the main stomping grounds, you know, for the main the main pay per view itself, because once we got back to uh, to the um, to the for those advertisements all that, we get to see some cool spots in the match. So like, so I do in a way appreciate that they didn't show that part. The, they, I, in a way, I'm, I'm, I appreciate that they didn't waste those, they didn't waste those, those spots uh, during the advertisement. I'm, I'm gonna say because this match was was, was a damn good match between Tony Nese, nice, Akira Tozawa, and Drew Gulak. And in the end, Drew Gulak goes for the 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 arc 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 and T neck breaker on Akira Tozawa. Tony nice was basically was pushed out of the ring and. Drew Gulak pins Akira Tozawa for the 
the three count in the wins. So you're a winner and new WWE Cruiserweight Champion. Uh, Drew Gulak wins. I'm surprised. I'm shocked. I, 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 I wasn't expecting him to win. I mean, I chose him to win, but I wasn't expecting him to win. But he won. He finally won. And it was a damn good match. I loved it. Now we get to the main show. Yes, now we get to the... <laughs> I get to the main show. Yeah, if, if you had to know how I felt about the pay per view itself. So, we get, the opening match was Becky Lynch defending her Raw Women's Championship against Lacey Evans. In 11 minutes and, and 30 seconds, the match lasted. Um, match itself, opening match was 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 good. Uh, yeah, Lacey Evans, she she botched that one spot, but I'm not gonna let that um hold that hold that match against her because the match still was still ends up being pretty good. Uh, Lacey Evans got got trapped in the disarm her by Becky Lynch, and then she immediately taps out. I said myself, why why would she do that? It makes sense later on. We'll, we'll get to that later. But yeah, but she immediately taps out, so Becky Lynch retains her Raw Women's Championship with the disarm her. And um, and I thought the match was good. Then we get to another match, which uh it was Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. You know, Kevin Owens from SmackDown, Sami Zayn from Raw. But you know, wild card rule versus the New Day, Big E and Xavier Woods in a tag team match that lasted 11 minutes and five seconds. Uh, right from the jump, Kim Owens and Sami Zayn took out Big E so they could take out Xavier Woods immediately so they could try and win the match here. Super kicks, um, blue thunder, thunder bombs. I was trying to remember how they did it too, but uh, it was very it was very good how they started off. Uh, and the match itself was pretty good too, you know. Despite how I feel about the, the new day, um, very, you know, I, I, I've been saying this every, I've been saying that every time, you know, we're saying it's the new day, you know. Despite how I feel about the new day, that's it's, you know, yeah, it's no, it's no secret that I'm, I'm not a fan of the, of the new day, but I am very impressed with the new day of the, of the wrestling, and 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 it showcases here. This was like an old school tag team match, uh, in the way that they did it here. Um. In the end, um, it was Xavier Woods taking the loss here, obviously. Um, so here's, here's, here's um, the gist of it. The match began with uh, Owens performing super kicks, a senton on a senton, a senton bomb on Xavier Woods for a near fall, Sami Zayn with a blue thunder bomb on Xavier Woods uh, for a near fall. And then in the end, Kevin Owens goes to the stunner on Xavier Woods for the win. Ricky did some moves too, by the way. He, he was impressive in the match too. I just couldn't stand his gyrating. rating. But there you go, that was the match. But yeah, but yeah the match is, even though um, I've seen this match before between uh, Owens and Zayn versus New Day back in 2017, it was still a good match. A, pre a good, a good pay-per-view match. Then we get to Samoa Joe defending his WWE United States Championship against Ricochet, the one and only Ricochet. It lasted 12 minutes and 25 seconds, and this match was damn good too. Ricochet was basically um, you know, oversun for Samoa Joe, showcasing that Samoa Joe is a monster. And this was this was a damn good match too. First time these guys I've ever seen wrestle each other, and they and they pull and they pull out very well. Ricochet ended up uh, with the on uh, the code breaker and the and the six thirty uh senton on Small Joe and gets the win over Small Joe. Now in a way I'm half happy that Ricochet won the match, but I'm, I'm also half upset that Small Joe once again loses another match. And it's nothing too well, well, uh, well, uh, nothing why I'm upset about this match too. Because this is a one a one and done deal between Small Joe and Ricochet. They should have done a better job building up this match between Ricochet and Small Joe. Because this, this match was pretty damn good. Had they built up more to make it meaningful, it would have been more beneficial. More, it would have been more, uh, you know, it, fans would have uh, paid to come to, to see this match uh, on a peer review. But unfortunately, that didn't, uh, you know, WWE wasn't thinking that. And I get it too, because Remy Jr. was hurt. He had to uh, let go of the, of the belt. Small Joe had to get the belt back because of that. So, But. In a way, they should advertise it more. 
They show um, main one best special war between Small Joe and Ricochet for the first time ever in WWE for a championship. A championship. So, so then we go, yo, know, after Ricochet winning the match and everything, he goes backstage to celebrate. We see we see Seth Rollins, the Universal Champion. We see Kurt Hawkins, Sakura, the former Raw Tag Team Champions. We see Carmella. Uh, we see Charlotte Flair. We see Heavy Machinery. They're all congratulating uh, Ricochet of win winning. And then, also I see Triple H backstage. So, yo, yo, congratulating uh, Ricochet of winning. And immediately I was like, fuck you, Triple H. Fuck you. Leech on Ricochet's, uh, yo, yo, victory, his leech on uh, his success. Fuck you. Fuck Triple H. I was so, I was so fucking pissed off that I saw Triple H there. Next match. Heavy Machinery was next to go up against Daniel Bryan and Rowan for the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship. That's at 14 minutes and 25 seconds. This match was was damn good too. I was enjoying this. I was you know from the big you know besides besides the whole Triple H bullshit. I was I was uh, I was uh, putting this pay per view over as as a good pay per view. Uh, yo, but we're I'm um, seeing good matches. Daniel Bryan and, and Rowan. Uh, yo. You know, making uh heavy machinery look like a million bucks. But here's the thing, they were in in Washington, yo. Know, basically, uh, the home the home state of of Daniel of Daniel Bryan, what the state of Washington, and the fans were cheering for Daniel Bryan. So heavy machinery didn't stand no chance against the popularity of the hometown hero, in a way, of Daniel Bryan. But match itself was still good. Uh, Tucker Knight he impressed me in this match. Doing a, a flying cross body, a moonsault. I'm like, wow. And then, you know, obviously with, Tuck, uh, with Otis, he always impresses me. But, um, but yeah, Tucker uh, was showcasing a lot in this match, which I was, I, yo, know, I think I gotta give him, I gotta give him a performance of the night. But well, I'll, I'll get that when I get to the highlights of the night. Um, and yeah, so yeah, Tucker, Tucker was uh, very impressive. Um. So in the end, it was Tucker re-entered into the ring. He gets rolled up by Dan Bryant and gets three, uh, and we get a three count in the win. And yo, know, basically Dan Bryant and Rowan gets a three count in the win. So uh, Dan Bryant and Rowan still the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And again, this was a good match. Yeah, yeah. So, so here's the thing, yo. The pre-show match, good match. The opening match, good match. The the, the second match, which was a tag team match, good match. The, the United States Championship match, good match. Uh, the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, good match. Like, wow, this is picking up. This is picking up. This pay per view was, pick, was picking it up and everything, right? Was, I was enjoying this match. I was enjoying this pay per view. You know, despite, you know, despite, you know it, it was not selling very well. It was not being booked very well. It was not being overhyped very well. Uh, well, I guess in a way it kind of was with the whole thing, with the tagline of kick gas, take names. Which it was, it was news over, over uh, you know, a little too over. Oh, over the top in the way. We're we'll, we'll Roman Reigns, Kofi Kingston, and whatever have you. Uh, based on how I saw the all the the, the, the packages, but yeah, this preview is going was going yo, know, was going great. But then it went downhill from here, and, and I'll get to why. Next, we get to Bailey defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Alexa Bliss, being accompanied by Nikki Cross in ten minutes and thirty five seconds. Match itself. Uh, it wasn't a bad match between uh, Bailey and Alexa Bliss, but because of the feud that they have for on the, on the main roster, has been so stale and so trash that I couldn't I couldn't give I couldn't uh, find a way uh, any any reason to, uh, to care about it. I mean, no, Alexa Bliss was doing good, Bailey was doing good, Nikki Cross, uh, you know, she's been out there and she was not being herself by the way. Nikki Cross. Was uh basically Nikki Cross is not the crazy Nikki Cross that we all know and love on NXT. She's now calm and a diva. Even though she's she's still dressed like Nikki Cross, but she's not the same Nikki Cross that I I, I I once uh, seen before. And it's a damn shame. But Billy goes for a suicide dive, which it was a uh, um in a way she did the. Uh, Oh my god, so loud, so loud, the truck. <laughs> but anyways, uh, um, Bailey uh, went for a, a, a Hiseki missile. 
and, and the base how I seen it, it lets the base pull Nicky Cross in the way, so Nicky Cross get, get, gets hit. Match continues, as Betty goes to the top rope, uh, this is just, um, I mean, Alyssa Bliss was going for the top rope, and trying to go for her Twisted Bliss. Uh, Betty gets, gets knocked, knocked off. No, I'm sorry. Tell remember how, how it happened. Because it, it was weird the way that, the way that, um, the way that it was structured. You know, the, the ending of the match. So, Alyssa Bliss on the top rope. Nikki Cross enters the ring. To try to attack Bailey. Basically distracting Alexa, Alexa Bliss. But she tries to go for a Twisted Bliss. Bailey gets on the top rope. Alexa Bliss knocks her down. At this point, Nikki Cross was, was actually out of the ring. Alexa Bliss goes for the, the, uh, the, the Twisted Bliss. But Bailey, get, uh, you know, she countered it by raising her knees up. Goes for the, the Bailey to Bailey. And gets the win. And like, what the fuck was that? What's that finish? That made no sense at all. I didn't get the finish at all. Um, yeah, so the finish, the finish made, didn't, didn't make it any better at all. Match, like I said, the match itself, I just couldn't, I just couldn't care about the match. I, I, don't, I don't know what it was, but the match, I didn't care for it. And then, and then um, after that match, we get to the next match. We get to Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre being accompanied by Shane McMahon. A sequels match that lasted 17 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, the fans were training for Roman Reigns in this, uh, on, on the show. Uh, so Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre were having a match. And, and to be honest with you folks, I didn't, care about this, I didn't care about this match either. Now here's the thing about, about this match too. During the, the match, Shane McMahon was kept in the front in the match. And at a point where the, where the, where the fans were chanting, Shane is awful. Shane is awful. Now here's the thing. I thought they were chanting for. I thought they were chanting. This is awful. This is awful. No, actually, they were actually chanting for. Sh they were chanting. Shane is awful. Not. Sh not. This is awful. They were. They were not talking about the match. They were talking about Shane McMahon. You know, being part. You know. You know, getting involved with this match was, uh, was awful. So here, during the match, Shane McMahon attempted to uh, distract Roman Reigns numerous times. Roman Reigns at uh, one point was chasing Shane McMahon into the crowd for Drew McIntyre to come off. Uh, Roman Reigns goes for the Superman punch on, on McIntyre or for Shane McMahon to pull the referee out. And this is where the uh, match goes downhill even more. And, like, uh, it wasn't bad enough Shane McMahon kick in the He gets involved again by pulling the referee out. Uh, referee uh, at, at one point ends up recovering. Shane McMahon tried to go for the coast to coast. On Roman Reigns, but actually he he did he does the coast to coast. Excuse me. Uh, Drew McIntyre goes to cover him, but Roman Reigns kicks out. Roman Reigns um he gets a Claymore kick from Drew McIntyre. I'm trying to remember if he pinned if, if McIntyre pinned him after that, but Roman Reigns ends up kicking out. I I can't remember, actually. Okay, so. Um, McIntyre sets up the Claymore kick, but Roman Reigns counter. Okay, so Roman Reigns counter it, and then he goes for the spear. And at one point, Shane got taken out too by by, by Roman Reigns. But this match ends up being a cluster uh, ends up being a cluster of a mess match. I like wow, just, I like I couldn't get I couldn't get into this match because Shane got involved too many times. And then, yo, know, Roman Reigns uh, goes for a Superman punch and, and a spear and pins Drew McIntyre. Shane McMahon beat Roman Reigns at um, Super Showdown at Saudi Arabia. Where Drew McIntyre was there to, to cause Roman Reigns to match. Because the WWE Strongman Grounds in, back, back, back in, in USA uh, at, at Tacoma, uh, Washington. And Drew McIntyre uh, loses to Roman Reigns, even though Shane McMahon was there to try to try help him. But at, at the end of the day, Roman Reigns beats Drew McIntyre. But the match itself, like I said, I couldn't care for it. But hey, the fans they cheer for Roman Reigns though. But same, 
And I guess in a way it's kind of working because Sugar Man is getting that heat from the fans now. Where the fans are getting sick and tired of Sugar Man now. I don't blame them, but it's whatever. But at the same time, Sugar Man, the best in the world, you know, the so called best in the world, beat Roman Reigns with, um, with help from, of Drew McIntyre at Saudi Arabia and, you know, Super Showdown. But on top, uh, on T Tacoma, Washington, WWE Stomping Grounds in, in, in America, Roman Reigns beats Drew McIntyre despite Jim Man helping, helping um, Drew McIntyre uh, throughout the entire match. Next, we get to another match that also went downhill from here. Kofi Kingston defending his WWE Championship against Dolph Ziggler in a steel cage match that lasted 20 minutes. Now, I've been hearing a lot about this whole thing with Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler being, you know, of the feud, the referees being compared to Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Really? These two don't hate each other. These two are, are, are friends outside of WWE. So how are they compared to Shawn Michaels and, and Bret Hart? And on top of that, when Robert Tanser still case match, they don't even compare to the um to the fuel of Bret Hart and Owen Hart. So I'm sorry. The the Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler feud compared to Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart doesn't compare. It does and, and again, it doesn't even compare to Bret Hart versus Owen Hart. And as far as this match was, did you call me Kingston and Dolph Ziggler? I've seen these guys wrestle many, many news times before. And I never, I never got the entire of their matches. You know, Dolph Ziggler and Kobe Kingston. In the Crown Championship matches, United States Championship matches, ladder matches, one-on-one -on -one matches, you know, tag team matches, wherever, wherever um, uh, floats, floats, floats the boat. And then we get to the Steel Cage match. And I thought it was just me, but after watching Deluxe Man's um, review, um, after watching uh, Soul Monsters review, Yo, Jason Sol Sol Monster from Sol Monster Sol Monster, I meant to say, um, and some other people's reviews as well, like um, Aaron Rift from NoDQ.com. This match was fucking boring. I mean, the, the match was, wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad match. They were, they were um, doing some good some good spots in the match, but it was boring. I couldn't get into it. I couldn't give two fucks about this match at all. But I'll tell you one thing that I did love about, about this match though. Go for Kingston the way he escaped the cage. So Dolce was was giving the guy out of the, of the cage, but then Kofi Kingston, he ends up jumping over Kofi Kingston, you know, leap, leapfrogging him out the out of the cage door and lands on uh, out on the outside. I'm like, wow, that was that was pretty impressive. But the rest of the match it, it, I couldn't I couldn't care for it. Not their fault, not their fault. But yeah, Kofi Kingston retains. But as, yo, no surprise there. Anyways, it's obvious he was going to retain. You know, Kofi Kingston being still still the champion. But there you go. And by the way, New Day Kofi Kingston is still is still the WWE champion. Maybe a time. Seth Freakin' Rollins defends his WWE Universal Championship in eight minutes and twenty five seconds with a special guest referee. Uh, hooked as he goes up against you know, as Seth Rollins defends the title against Baron Corbin so Baron Corbin announces a, spe a special guest referee and it ends up being Lacey Evans <laughs> of course of course because Lacey Evans is going to screw over Seth Rollins who's dating in real life Becky Lynch and then on top of that, to make to make matters even worse, WWE is um yo is um exposing this on TV that Seth Rollins and um, Becky Lynch are going out in real life. So they gotta uh yo they gotta um put the narrative that on t yo, on, yo they gotta put the narrative on TV that Rollins and and Becky are dating. Like we like we like we, like, like we care about their personal life anyways. Like who cares? But WWE, they they want they want they want this and they got it and look what happened. I'll, well, I'll tell you what happened during the match between Seth Rollins and Baron Corbin. 
the crowds were chanting for Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, AEW. I just remember what else they cheered for too. Oh yeah, also they were cheering for Becky Lynch. Yeah, they, they're trying to rewind Becky to grab the uh, Lacey Evans. So here's how the match uh, ends up being structured. Um, match itself, I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought it was all right. I thought the match was, was uh, you know, was good in a way. Uh, but at the same time, the the booking got was so bad that I couldn't care for the match, and neither did the fans. And how ironic! This always happens to Seth. This always happens with Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins versus uh, Finn Balor, reviewing the Universal Championship belt, the Turbo belt, which I still hate to this day. Fans tri- uh, triple over that back, you know, back in 2016 at SummerSlam. Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose, um, TLC. I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Crip fans crap over that one. Dolph Ziggler versus uh, Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental Championship title. Extreme Rules. Iron Man match. Fans uh, they didn't care about that match at all. They care about they care all about the clock. And then when they when they when they got rid of the clock, they start crapping on the match. That, am I missing anything else? Besides this? They cover over this match too. I, I think that they trying to this is bullshit where it takes place else being the referee. Oh yeah, Paul Heyman was on the show though. But they were teasing that Brock Lesnar could be there. You know, to cash in. Which he didn't. But Okay. But yeah, the match itself I thought it was good. Bro Corbin was was wasn't bad in the match. He was actually all uh, pretty good in the match. Seth Rollins was pretty good too. Oh, uh, Lacey Evans. Um. Well, actually, let's get to this whole thing. Um. Lacey Evans was in favor only to Baron Corbin to go over uh, Seth Rollins, who is, you know, the re- you know, who's 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 going out with Becky Lynch in real life. And Michael Cole's got key points out every time too. Um. So Seth Rollins goes for a power bomb onto Baron Corbin on the broadcast table. Lacey Evans goes for the count, but Lacey Evans decides to go for a no count out match instead for the title. Baron Corbin attacks Seth Rollins with a steel chair. Lacey Evans takes the, uh, the chair away from him, uh, and then she says, "You know what? This is no disqualification." At this point now, like we're, we're all getting tired of this now. Like can we end this short already? So the match continues on. Baron Corbin goes for a DT on Seth Rollins on a steel chair. Seth Rollins counter, but you know, only for Seth Rollins to counter for a fucking arrow on the steel chair to Baron Corbin. He goes for a cover, but Lacey Evans refused to, re- refused to count. And then at one point when she did count, she was going one, two, and then, ow, my arm. Because, yo, earlier on the, on the night against Becky Lynch, to disarm her, you know, she, when she made a tap out, because, oh, no. That's, it, it, it was so fucking stupid. I couldn't care about this match anymore, folks. Um, I was like, can, can this show end the raid? Cause I, I, I was like, yeah, I was doing so good at first, and then all of a sudden, yeah, it, all went, it all went downhill from here. And the main event made it worse. The main event made it the absolute worst. It was the absolute shit. But, but uh, Lacey Evans refused to out uh, the count for Seth Rollins. She saps Seth Rollins. She gives him a low blow. Baron Corbin uh, goes for the end of days. And then all of a sudden... Now all of a sudden Becky Lynch comes out. Like what the fuck took you so long to come out there for? So she finally comes out to attack Lacey Evans. And then we get some uh, three officials coming out there. And then one official came into the ring because Barry Corbin wants him to get one needs an official in the ring. Because Becky Lynch is um, beat up on one official who's who is official, who's who's supposed to be the special guest official. And it was John Cohn, the same John Cohn referee from Super Showdown, who refereed Barry Corbin, you know, the same referee that Barry Corbin was arguing with. I it's it's just what I heard that ha- what happened. Uh, but we're going to take some reviews. Um, so, all of a sudden, Bill Corman was like, was like, uh, you know, don't you, you, you better do, you better, uh, do it right this time. And then, all of a sudden, he goes to the end of the day, but Seth Rollins goes for a counter, goes to super kick, goes, goes to the curb, the curb stomp, I guess it's three count in the win, and after that, I was done. I, I show up to show after that. <laughs> I didn't care about the show anymore. I was like, damn it, WWE, you, you were just right, you were right there, you had me in the palm of your hands on the show. Yeah, 
and your master fucked up at the end of, the, uh, of that main event. The rest of the matches, well, the Shane Man thing uh, was one thing. It's whatever. And the whole thing with Nikki Cross is like, ah, uh, ah, uh, it's it was confusing, but like whatever. But you you end up fucking it up at the end of the day, at the main event. With the, with the whole Lacey Evans debacle. Garbage. The pre- the preview wasn't garbage, by the way. Uh, the, the the show show was good. So, with that being said, uh, before I get to, yo, know, the the highlights of the night, I gotta talk about Seth Rollins here, folks, because Seth Rollins must be high as fuck when he did this. But but at the same time, after him about what else he did after that, I'm like, Seth Rollins lost all credibility of me, and I, and that cooled down Seth Rollins too. But then he goes to pull this shit. I'm about to I'm gonna pull it right now, folks. Just give me one moment. I gotta go on Twitter. Alright, let me uh, search this. Let me search for Seth freaking Rollins. Alright, we go. W.E. Rollins. Rollins. And, yes, and I'm following Seth Rollins on Twitter. Yeah. So, let me read what, what, Seth, what Seth Rollins said on Twitter. And it, it this was on, on the night of, from, you know, from, from Battleground. I mean, not Battleground, Stomping Grounds, excuse me. Battleground. Yeah, I wish. But, hold on a second, let me try to find it. Now let's suffer to down the tweet. I don't know if you did or not, but maybe maybe find this tweet. Where is that tweet? Here we go. Chef Rollins uh, said, "Best pro wrestling on the planet." Period. Because he was basically uh, re- replying to WWE on Twitter by saying WWE superstars look to kick butt and take names. I'm, I'm, that's what it literally says, folks. Kick butt and take names instead of you know kick ass and take names is kick butt and take names. But anyways, at WWE stomping grounds. Live this Sunday, you know, the whole thing will uh, be on 7 p.m. and everything on the WWE Network and everything. And then Seth Rollins replied by saying, Best pro wrestling on the planet, period. I disagree. And then he goes to double, he, he goes doubling down. And, and he literally, he literally on tweet, tweet this too by, by, by saying, Doubling down. Best pro wrestling on the planet. See the cruiserweight triple threat, and that's just one um, one night. He says one match uh, among amongst the many. Find any else? Find anyone else uh, alive who does what? Uh, you know what I do as well. You know I do it as often as I do it. Uh, yeah, I can't. And basically, put, he puts hashtag WWE stomping grounds and hashtag WWE, well, hashtag Universal Champion, and then, and then after the E and everything. So I'm like, no, WWE is not the best pro wrestling on the planet. He's just kiss, he's, he's he's just kissing this man's ass, um, you know, just to kiss, just to, uh, uh, to sick of kissing the ass because he's he's a sellout. But yeah, I, I will agree with him though. What pertains to the Cruiser Championship match, that two regret match, you know, it was even though it was on a pre-show, that was a good match. And it's like among others, match that happened on the show. Um, uh, I'm not gonna say there were bad matches, you know, what pertains to Bailey and Alexa Bliss, Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, 
um, uh, Kofi Kingston and uh, Dolph Ziggler, and and then the main event. But here's the thing. Uh, the fans may have a good time watching the matches. Yo, know, they were there live. But the, for us, that watching at home, we thought it was fucking boring. You know, the on the you know, basically the on the, the steel cage match. Well, I'm not, I'm not gonna speak for all uh, on behalf of everyone at home. Just just a few. Uh, for uh, the the man, Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre and the Shane McMahon debacle, you know, involvement and all that. That 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 basically uh, lost my interest. Uh, Nikki Cross, you know that that um ending of the match of uh, you know, where uh, I I like what was that? Like what was supposed to happen there? That that was, that that dropped the, that that killed it for me. And then the main event itself with Lace Evans debacle being the referee that killed it, 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 it entirely for me. And what, and Amy comes to Barry Corbin by the way. I want I want I want to get that straight. Uh, right, 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 um, I want that. I want. Yo, you take this the wrong way. Barry Corbin. It's not Baron Corbin. It's, I, yeah, it, it was it was the whole booking of Lacey Evans. It was a problem. Um, what was next? I was gonna say. I forgot what I was gonna say now. Uh, oh yeah, Seth Rollins tweet. Um, the main event basically um it killed it for me because of the whole thing with Lacey Evans. But yeah, but after Seth Rollins uh, did the double the doubling down tweet. About best pro wrestling on the planet, where it takes to talk about WWE. He says, you know, to someone, uh, find anyone else alive who does what I do as well as I do as as often as I do do it. Y'all can't. And then you know, and then Will Osprey, Will Osprey, who won the 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 best of the of the Super Junior twenty six. I mean, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, the best of the Super Junior twenty six tournament. Will Ospreay answer by saying, I'm alive. And Seth Rollins basically replied, hold on a second, maybe may find that tweet. Oh my god, someone misses just, um, just Michael Jackson uh, gift of uh, uh, Michael Jackson eating popcorn, yo, yo, from the music video Driller. Uh, says, I just came here to read comments. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, it's from Our Dream at w- at W E R Dream. It's, you know, Ra- Rachel Dream. That's her name. I mean, I- I'm not sure. Ra- uh, Dream is her last name. It's actually her last name, but whatever. I'm trying to find that tweet from Will Osprey. Where's that World Osprey tweet? Where is it? And there's other means too, by the way, where it takes to the um the, to the elite, you know, laughing. Oh, that's... Where's Royal Osprey's tweet? Maybe if I search for it, it'll, it'll, probably, it'll probably show up. All right, hey, here we go. Maybe, maybe uh, do something here, folks. My apologies. Again, I'll try. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm doing this just to prove a pr- pr- point here. Spray. 
All right, here we go. Here it is. Like I said, with we're, 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 we're Will Ospreay re, uh, replying, saying, I'm alive. And yeah, I agree with, uh, with I agree with, of, uh, uh, Will Ospreay, where he said, I'm alive, because he is, he, he can do better than Seth Rollins in the ring. And, and, and here's not, here's nothing too, what pertains to, uh, Will Ospreay, I never heard any fans saying, uh, yo, basically what pertains to, um, Will Ospreay's matches, I never heard any fans hijacking, hijacking um, his matches. What pertains to saying, "This is awful," "This is boring," or, or you know, or change or change other other names, other names like uh, Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, or change for AEW, or change for, or, or you know, or change for uh, you know, whatever, you know, some some stupid shit, or or change what, or changing, or you know, for a clock, you know. Yeah, so that's basically what I'm trying. To, that's basically what I'm saying there. Uh, Will Ospreay, uh, yo, who won the um the, the best of the Super Junior, uh, 26 tournament, uh, by being Shingo, you know, who's who's part of who's part of uh of Los Inco, but not baby the who who's been in New Japan Pro Wrestling since since uh last last October, which was last year, who's been undefeated since then, and then. Yeah, so, uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, who's been undefeated in New Japan Pro Wrestling since October of last year. And who's been, uh, who's been winning, um, you know, uh, nine, nine, who's got nine points, uh, and basically uh, winning a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, in the, in the, um, in the, in the series of, of, the, of the, the best of the Super Junior 26 tournament. Until he, he, he wrestled against Will Ospreay, and Will Ospreay beat him. Um... Which I was upset, a little upset at that, but at the same time, Will Ospreay, he's the man. I'm, I'm a fan of his. Uh, I just wish Shingo could have won that one, but at the same time, I'm, now, now looking back at it, I'm glad Will Ospreay won because Will Ospreay is alive. He he can do better than Seth Rollins, and then Seth Rollins, he he replied by saying to him, "Yo, yo, little man, there, yo, so, uh, yo." I think he said "little man" or something like that, and I said myself, "Little man, he's 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 your same. He's, he's you're both the same height. What are you talking about? He's your." What are you talking about, little man? He's big, he's 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 same size, just like just like Seth Rollins. And then he says he's got a better um he's got a better uh, rest, he's got a, a better you uh who, who's working for WWE and and Ricochet. And I say myself, who who is Seth Rollins think he is? Seth Rollins um uh, what I don't know what's going on with Seth Rollins at this point now. I don't know what Seth Rollins' deal is. But you know what? I don't fucking like it. And on top of that, the whole thing, the whole thing with John Moxley pisses me off too. Not, not, not what, no, it's basically what Seth Rollins said to, uh, uh, about John Moxley. It's what pisses me off the most as well. So yeah, I'm now back to the bandwagon. Now I'm now I'm back to getting off of the bandwagon of Seth Rollins. Fuck Seth Rollins. Because why are you still uh, you know, continue to be a slave in the WWE to be a sellout? John Moxley is doing um, better things outside of the, of the company because he he has more freedom than you. He can talk more freedom than you. He can wrestle with more freedom than you. He can, he can have more input freedom in than you. The point is, John Moxley is better than you, Seth Rollins. And Will Ospreay is better than you as well. You talk about Will Ospreay, one of the best wrestlers in the world. Period. So no, WWE is not the best uh, pro wrestling on the planet. New, New Japan Pro Wrestling is. AEW is right now. Even Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling. Magic League Wrestling as well. WWE is not the best pro wrestling on the planet. They're the best sports entertaining on the planet. Or in a way or you know, whenever they want to be entertaining. So
So yeah, fuck off, Seth Rollins. But there you go, folks. Now, let's get to the highlights of the night before I get to my overall string about the show. So, highlights of the night. Starting off first with Swerve of the Night was Lacey Evans being announced as a special guest referee. Moment of the night would be Ricochet winning the United States Championship. Because, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed, uh, you know. I feel like that was my moment of the night uh, because surf, yeah, because uh, Ricochet uh, he, he 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 deserves it. He deserves to be the United States champion. Despite you know me not liking that Smojo has to lose again, but it was all about Ricochet. And I yo know, Ricochet he's a man. He's a better he's a, he's, a, he's a better he's a better man than than the man Seth Rollins is. Anyways, um. Entrance of the night. Hmm. I'm gonna go with Lacey Evans. But the outfit that she was wearing, I'm gonna go with, uh, with her. Entrance of, the, entrance of the night. I was thinking about Alexa Bliss, but uh, even though she did look uh, hot, smoking hot in that, in that outfit, but Lacey Evans, I'm gonna go with Lacey Evans instead. Um, move of the night. Move of the night. I think I'll have to go for. Oh yeah, speaking of speaking of um, what of Ricochet, uh, Ricochet was being confronted backstage when he's doing um, you know, his full sh his follow up for being the United States champion. He was confronted by Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson to do the whole two sweet thing, and then AJ Styles showed up, and then he he um doing the two two sweet thing with uh, Ricochet as well as well. You know, basically taking pictures with uh, Ricochet. Like, what the hell is this? Uh, I, should, I, I, thought, I should also point it out too. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, but as far, as far as move of the night, um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Kofi Kingston. Uh, yo, know, the way he um, you know, jump, jump over, drove the out, out, out of the cage door to get out, out of the cage to win. I thought that was good. So I'm gonna go for that one as move of the night. Um, finish of the night will be Ricochet's uh, six thirty senton. Performance of the night. I'm gonna have to go with Tucker Knight from uh, Heavy Machinery from that WWE uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championship because he impressed me uh, on that night. So that's why he gets performance on the night. And finally, match of the night, in my opinion, what well, I thought was match of the night is it was either Ricochet versus Samoa Joe, you know, what pertains to the WWE, what pertains to the WWE United States Championship, or the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championships between Dan Bryan and Eric Rowan defending against Heavy Machinery. But if I have to, if I have to choose one, I'm going to choose Ricochet versus Small Joe for the WWE United States Championship. Championship. To me, that has to be matched tonight. And my overall strength for the show, I'm going to go. I'm going to go six out of ten, just just to be fair. I thought it was a fair a fair. A, a good fair show. Half was good, but half was not so good. So th there you go. So that being said, folks, thank you all for watching. For this is the Natural Born Driller saying peace on the streets. For this was your WWE Stopping Grounds review. Take care. And fuck Seth Rollins.